Hey everybody, in this video, what we're looking at is three different ways to get your footer to stick to the bottom of your page. Now, some people call this creating a sticky footer, not to be confused with CSS position sticky, which I covered in another video, but that's a whole different thing. So by creating a sticky footer, what's the problem that we're trying to solve? Well, you see, sometimes we want to get our footer to stay or stick to the bottom of the page, but our content on the page is too short. And so what happens is that our footer ends up floating up to the end of that content and really annoying us. So how can we get that footer to actually stick to the bottom of the viewport, even when this is the case? Well, let's find out. Now, right quickly before we look at our first method of getting our footers to stick to the bottom of the page, I want to take a look at what your first instinct might be, and that might be to use position fixed on your footer. So just stay with me for a minute here while I show you this. I'm here in VS Code, and I have my index.html with some boilerplate here. And as you can see on line six, I'm linking to my styles.css file, which is here on the right side of the page. I already have some elements and some rules in my CSS declared. So let me explain what I have. Basically in my HTML, I have a header, and the header has an H1, which has the code creative. And then I have a main section here with a paragraph tag with a whole bunch of lorem ipsum. And on the bottom, of course, here's our footer with a simple H2 saying again, the code creative in a paragraph element with an HTML character entity here for the copyright symbol in 2020. And my CSS file here, I'm using the universal selector just to get rid of any default margins. So I'm setting all margins to zero. And to start with, I've given my header and my footer a little light gray background color, just so we can distinguish them on the page. So let's flip over to the browser and let's see what we have so far. And here you can see we have our header, our main section here with all that lorem ipsum, and we have our footer. So as you can see, everything here is in the normal document flow. And because the lorem ipsum in our main section doesn't extend down the page, the footer, which is the element underneath the main section, just follows right after the main section here, as you would expect it to do in the normal document flow. So like I said, our first thought might be to use position fixed here on the footer, because we want this footer to be anchored here at the bottom of the page. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's come into our CSS. We'll make a separate rule for the footer. And let's give it a position fixed. And once we have position fixed, that opens up the top right, bottom and left properties. And so we can anchor this footer to the bottom of the viewport by saying bottom zero. So that's zero pixels away from the bottom of the viewport. And then let's stretch that footer out to fill the entire width of the viewport. So for the width, we can give it 100 viewport width units. And let's save and let's go to the browser. And here we can see our footer here, fixed to the bottom of the viewport, even though the main content that proceeds stops up here. But now what if I come in here into my main section and I actually create another P tag and I give it a whole bunch of lorem ipsum. And I do this because I want to see what happens when we actually have a whole ton of content here in the main section. Let's go back and check it out. And now you can see we have a scroll bar here because we have a lot of content. And if you look at the footer, you can see that the footer is always in view and the main content sort of scrolls up behind it. And this is one way to fix your footer to the bottom of the viewport. However, it might not be the most aesthetically pleasing choice to make. You see, what we want to do actually with a sticky footer is that in this kind of case where we do have enough content to fill the viewport, we don't always want to see the footer. We only want it to come into view when we've actually scrolled down to the end of the page. But at the same time, when we don't have enough content here, we don't want the footer to float up to meet the end of that content. We want it to stay fixed to the bottom of the viewport. Just as an example here, if I go to a site like digitalocean.com, what you can see is that there's more than enough content to fill the entire viewport. And because of that, we get a scroll bar. But as you can see, the footer is not visible. However, if we get to the bottom of the page, now all of a sudden we see it. If this footer had a position fixed, it would always be right here on the page, no matter how much page content we actually had. So now let's get into the three different ways that we can create a sticky footer. The three different ways are the push method, the calc method, and the flexbox method. Two of these, the push method and the calc method, require that we have a fixed height footer. So they require that we define explicitly the height of our footer. With the flexbox way, however, we don't need to have a fixed height footer. 
So as we'll see, if we need a variable height footer, Flexbox is the way to go. But let's start out first with this push method. So back here in VS Code, I had basically what I had before with my position fixed example. I've got my header area, my main area, and I've got my footer. And remember before in that main section, I created two different P tags with a whole bunch of lorem ipsum. Right now I just commented out the second one. And if we go back to the browser, we can see that because we have less content, the footer once again is sort of floating up to meet the end of that content. So with that as a starting point, let's see how we can use the push method to get our footer to stick to the bottom of the viewport. So like I said, this one requires that we know the height of the footer. So let's start out by creating a rule for our footer and let's just give it some height and we'll give it 100 pixels. And now we go back to the browser, we can see we have a 100 pixel footer here. And here's the way that this push method works. At the end of our main content here, we're gonna actually create another element, which is gonna be a div, and we're gonna give it a class of push. Now, of course, you can give this any class name you want. You'll see in a moment why we're doing this. Now, there are basically two more things that we need to do to get this trick to work. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create a rule for our main element. What we're gonna do on this main element is we're gonna give it a min height of 100 VH or 100 viewport heights. Now, if you're not familiar with viewport units, the idea is simple. If we go from the top of the viewport to the bottom of the viewport, this would be 100 VH. Similarly, if we use viewport widths and we went from the left of the viewport to the right of the viewport, that would be 100 VW. So with viewport units, the height and the width are basically divided into 100 slices. And so for example, if we wanted half of the height of the viewport, we can say 50 VH, which would give us a height of 50% of the viewport or similarly 50% of the width of the viewport. But now let's go back to VS Code and let's finish working out this push method. So the other thing we need to do in the main section is we're gonna give a margin bottom in this case, we want to give it a margin bottom of negative 100 pixels, and that's to counter the 100 pixel height of the footer. And finally, this div with class of push will also want to give that one a height of 100 pixels. All right, so in the main content, I uncommented out this second p tag, so we should have a whole ton of content now in the browser. So let's flip back to the browser and see what's going on. So here you see we have the header, we have our main content, which is enough to extend past the viewport, so we get a scroll bar. And as we scroll down to the bottom of the page, finally we see our footer there on the bottom of the page. But let's comment out that second p tag. And now we should have not enough content. And as we can see, here's our footer here, stuck to the bottom of the page. It no longer floats up to meet the bottom of this main content. So let's talk about how this is actually working. So our main content, remember, we gave it a minimum height or min height of 100 VH. So this is our main content. So that means that from this point of our main content, we're saying the minimum height has to be 100% of the viewport here. However, we gave it a margin bottom of minus 100 pixels. And we did that because our footer has a height of 100 pixels. So basically what we're doing is we're saying, even though this main content has a height of 100 VH, bring this footer up 100 pixels or its height so that we can see it in the viewport. And what about that div with the class of push? Well, the whole purpose of that div is to avoid our footer from overlapping any content we might have above it. So that div with the class push has the same height as the footer, but of course it's empty, so there's no harm in bringing the footer up over it. Like let's bring back this second p tag and let's see what happens if we just commented out this div with the class push. Now let's go back to the browser. And if we scroll down, here you can see that our footer has come up the minus 100 pixels. However, now it's overlapping this main content because we don't have that empty div of 100 pixels for which this footer can overlap. So that's the first method, the push method. You can see possibly a couple of the disadvantages of using this method. One is that of course we need a fixed footer height and we need to know what that height is because here, like this margin bottom, relies on knowing the height of the footer, as well as the empty push div requires knowing the height of the footer, right? Because this margin bottom and this push class are being used to sort of compensate for the height of the footer. And then as well, in our markup, we're creating an extra element in our HTML, which is sort of extraneous. 
So let's move on to the next method, the calc method. So one of the nice things about this one is that we no longer need this extraneous div as we made here with a class of push. So let's get rid of that. And we can get rid of it here in our CSS as well. Now, like I said, this one, like the push method that we saw, relies on knowing the height of the footer. So let's keep our footer at 100 pixels height. We are going to get rid of the min height and the margin bottom in our main rule. Because in this main rule is where we're going to use calc. Now, if you're not familiar with calc, as we can read on MDM web docs, the calc CSS function lets you perform calculations when specifying CSS property values. So it's this calc function that we're going to use to find out exactly how much height our main section needs to take up in order to keep our footer stuck to the bottom of the page. So let's comment out the second p tag. Let's go back to the browser. And here we can see once again, we have our header, our main content, which is not enough to fill the page. And so our footer once again falls here in the normal document flow to follow right after this main content. So in order to get it to stick to the bottom of the page, let's come into our main section and let's use calc. We'll use it on the min height property. And this is how we're going to use it. We're going to say calc and we're going to take 100 VH. And from that, what we want to do is we want to subtract the height of the footer plus the height of the header. So we know our footer is 100 PX. In this case, we didn't explicitly set a height of the header. So let's go back to the browser and let's see the height of our header. We can see here that it's 37 pixels. So let's go back to our CSS and we'll add 37 to the 100. So that's going to be 137 pixels. And now let's go back to the browser. And here we can see our footer is now stuck to the bottom of the page. And let's see what happens if we have more than enough content in the main section. Now you can see the footer is not in view until we scroll to the bottom of the page. And once again, we see it here stuck to the bottom of the viewport, just like we want. But let's comment out that second P tag and let's see how this is working. So we said that this main section here, we want this to have a min height of 100 VH minus the height of the header and the height of the footer. So that means if this header here is 37 pixels high, this footer is 100 pixels high, subtract that 137 pixels from the total available viewport heights and make sure that this main section has a minimal height of the remainder of the available viewport heights. And as you can see by using min height, in the case where we do have enough content or more than enough content, we give this main section the ability to increase its height. And now our third method here, the Flexbox method. The advantage of using Flexbox is that we don't need a predetermined height for the footer. And also we don't need to create any extra or extraneous elements in our HTML. So with that being said, we can get rid of this explicit setting of the height for the footer. We're not going to be using calc anymore, so let's get rid of that. And with this method, what we need to do is we need to give the body element a display of flex. Now, if we just do that, you can see what happens. All the elements within the body, the header, the main, and the footer get arranged in this way across the page because the default flex direction is row. So what we need to do is set the flex direction to column. So that way our header, our main, and our footer will follow each other vertically just as we want. So we'll give the body a flex direction of column. Okay, now let's go back and check that out. And we can see we get basically what we had before, everything sort of falling in the normal document flow. Now, because this entire body is a flex container now, we want to tell that container how much height it should occupy. And we want this entire container to occupy 100 VH, or 100% of the viewport height. So on the body element, let's give that a min height of 100 VH. Now, when we flip back to the viewport, we see we have the same thing, although now our container knows that it should occupy 100% of the viewport height. What we want to do is we want to say for this main section, we want to use the flex grow property so that we can say, allow this main section to grow or expand to take up the remainder of the viewport height. So let's go ahead and do that. In our main section, let's give it a flex grow of one. And now when we go back, we can see that this main section has taken on the remaining available space left in the viewport. And as a consequence, it pushes the footer to stick to the bottom of the viewport. 
Now, what if I come into the footer, let's say at a later point, and I wanted to add some content. So let's give that some lorem ipsum. And now because we have a dynamic footer, if we go back to the viewport, we can see that our footer has taken on some height because we added some more paragraph content, but still sticks to the bottom of the viewport because of this flex container, which automatically calculates the amount of remaining viewport height space and assigns it to this main section. And just to see it working, let's uncomment out that second P tag in the main section. Go back to the browser. And now we can see we have a whole bunch of content here. We have a scroll bar. And if we scroll down, we can see our footer here still sticking to the bottom of the viewport. So with that, you now have three different ways that you can get your footers to stick to the bottom of the viewport. We looked at the push method, we looked at the calc method, and we looked at the flexbox method. We saw that with the first two methods, the push method and the calc method, we needed to know the height of the footer. And with the push method, we also needed to add that extraneous div in there. And so some of these things might be disadvantages to you. If you need a footer with a dynamic height, one that can change, then flexbox might be the best choice. So hopefully you got some value out of this video. If you feel like you did, please give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel. And also, if you can, leave me a comment down below and let me know what other topics you'd like to see covered. See you next time.